when it comes to kids and lice, times are a changing. And this may make you scratch your head a little bit because more <laughs> schools are doing away with their no knit policies. But is this a risky practice or a step in the right direction? We're about to find out as we discuss this. And join us in to weigh in on the conversation via Skype. In support of letting kids with lice stay in class is school nurse Deborah Pontius. And then on the opposing side is Deborah Altshuler, the president of the National Pediculosis Association. Ladies, thank you both so much for joining us. And I'll tell you what, this conversation has stirred a big time debate even in the halls of this production studio. Nurse Deborah, I wanna start with you because you actually helped write the policies that really changed the direction regarding kids with lice in schools. Tell us why. The evidence just doesn't support excluding children from school for either nits or lice. When I started as a school nurse, I would discover that children in the classroom of other children that had lice did not have lice. So I started to question why was I doing this if children didn't have lice in the same classroom. So I started doing my research and found out that this action of excluding children and checking every child in a classroom just isn't supported by research, just isn't supported by the evidence. The American Academy of Pediatrics, the CDC, the American uh, School Health Association and the National Association of School Nurses do not support excluding children for lice uh, because it's not transmitted in school. Extremely rarely is lice actually transmitted in school. In fairness, that's, that's one perspective. Deborah, you're president of the National Pediculosis Association. You say, not so fast, you still believe that kids who have lice really do need to potentially stay away from school. Why do you have that perspective? Well, what she's describing, and I can understand her perspective as a school nurse, uh, is, an, is about attendance. And our, our position on children uh, is really not about keeping them out of the classroom. It's about empowering parents to send them to school without the problem in the first place. And um, when you use the term no-nip policy, they vary from school to school, but yet they all consider themselves uh, the same no-nip policy, which isn't true. So we're um, in favor of seeing the whole problem through the lens of the family and the children and making sure that they're prepared before they ever have to confront the problem to know how to look for the lice and how to avoid treatments that can be very risky and get promoted because, in fact, the industry pays some of the nonprofit organizations to, um, to promote them. And they are not in uh, any way consistent with the way good medicine is practiced. And I, I don't profess to be a physician. I'm not one. This is very basic knowledge about protecting children from pesticides. And that's what the treatments for lice are. So, Nurse Deborah, I'm just curious. So, I, I know that part of the controversy in schools, and I have two elementary school age kids, so this is a topic near and dear to my heart, that it's there's a difference, right, between live crawling lice and the nits, which are those adherent little eggs on the hair. And my understanding is that schools actually vary in terms of their policy, whether you're allowed to come back to school with actual live crawling lice versus the nits, correct? That's true. There are policies that are no nits and no live lice. There's schools that are uh, just no live lice, and there's schools such as my own um, that do allow both cry crawling lice and also um, nits in school. Um, well, nits don't transmit lice. Uh, the most common nits that you see are actually the dead nits that are a half of inch or more along the hair shaft, and those are ones that have already either hatched or are not going to hatch because of the life cycle of the louse. So those are the ones that are easy to see and usually the ones that children are getting excluded yeah, it's for. It's impossible but, yeah. to say that all of those nits are, are dead. I mean, sure, you can you can treat with one of these uh, lice compounds and it's you, you'll no longer see the moving white lice, but if you see nits, you haven't combed them all out. They, they can potentially they can hatch. hatch.